everyone. Welcome to our podcast. I'm Amanda. I'm Sam, and I am a physical education and health teacher. Graduated from SUNY Cortland um, last December. And right now I'm doing, I just finished up a leave replacement on Long Island for my first time as a phys ed graduate. I am also a graduate from SUNY Cortland with physical education and health. And right now I'm just substitute teaching in a high school, but looking forward to having my own physical education class. And we are both uh, graduate students at Adelphi University. Today, we are going to be going over connected learning and all about um, this topic. Today, we're going to be, like Amanda said, we're going to be talking about connected learning and how we can apply it into the classroom and in the gymnasium. And Amanda, this could be something that you can have a lot of experience with being a um, substitute we know we're in the classroom a lot as well and not just in the gymnasium. So it can be fun to talk about both sides of it. And we're going to be um, applying different tactics and approaches throughout um, that we've learned about throughout the readings and our experiences and what we've been doing. One of our main readings that we um, found super informative was the Connect and Learning Research Network. Yeah, so... Uh, one thing I wanted to touch upon was my take on connected learning. So this is something that can be stretched and implemented in so many ways. Uh, connected learning has, there's such a beauty behind it because it's not just one approach. Um, you're going to take students' interests and relate those to opportunities and relationships. And uh, one thing in that article that we uh, covered the connected learning research based one. There was a chart, and in the chart, there was uh, the center was youth interest, and then there was all these intertwined uh, connections that related to it. And it just goes to show that connected learning can actually incorporate so many different aspects of life, not only in the classroom, but also um, outside as well. Some of those related back to home, career, school, and the community. And um, in each of those four categories was broken down into smaller subcategories. So it just goes to show uh, how much can really go on through connected learning. And uh, this really stood out to me because students in today's world, um, I see it actually in the classrooms while I'm subbing, they get so bored easily. So Connected learning can be that way to incorporate um, a more engaging and effective learning environment. So definitely shows the importance of connected learning and how we can kind of reach our students on a different level. Um, so Amanda, you're saying that there's a um, way of teaching that can really focus on what students are interested in and not just what is supposed to be in the textbooks and be taught? Oh, yeah, Definitely. How fun! Okay, so do we think that everyone should be using connected learning? After reading connected learning in like week two throughout this course, um, there are a lot of things that stuck with us because of how it can really be used in any aspect in um, the educational settings because as phys ed teachers, not so much health, but um a lot of specials are easily like pushed to the side or forgotten. So for something that can be easily related to our field is, you know, something that we get really excited about. So that's um, why we're so interested in this topic. Uh, like we said before, it's not only like one class focus. So everyone, every type of teacher across, you know, high school, elementary school, middle school, can find what their students are interested in and just build off of that and find out, you know, a variety of topics and then can bring that into um, their lessons. Like, you know, right now it's the holiday season and we find that students are super excited about their holiday concerts and, you know, holiday breaks. So we definitely like bring that into the gym, whether that be like um, getting everyone excited with having Christmas music or having, you know, Christmas themed activities or in like the health setting, you know, bringing that in as well, how to be safe during um, 
the holiday season and, you know, things to look um, out for. So it can really be connected in any way. And um, even if a student isn't interested in that particular um, topic, there's ways to, you know, kind of pick out things that they can be interested in to help them make those connections, even though it might not be um, such a direct connection as it would be for some other students. I like the point that you made about the holiday season and connecting that to uh, uh, your classroom because I was covering in the gym the other day and ever we have this, uh, I guess, uh, plan. After Thanksgiving, as soon as that Thanksgiving holiday is over, that's it. Only Christmas music and holiday music. So we have students actually come down and request songs or uh, request to go on the speakers so that we can actually relate to them and um, incorporate the music that they're interested in. And you can just tell the kind of... Like the vibe is right, so different. The change of the kind of... Uh, environment it shifts from kind of them just coming into the gym going through the motions to now they're actually into it and uh ha- it just shows that they're having a better time so yeah we have like kids singing and dancing and yeah you know, it's, it's exciting to have them not super structured and you know have them have a little freedom right and express themselves in a different way right and you know that's the overall goal of phys ed and we want them to be enjoying it while taking part of it. So connecting learning is definitely really important in our uh, career. Um, Okay, so moving on. So what would your ideal connected learning environment look like? So I know for myself, um, going through some of these, uh, these last few weeks and just overall the course in general, it can be difficult to connect things to phys ed. Um, you know, a lot of our classmates are English teachers, social studies, social studies teachers, um, math teachers. So a lot of those core content subjects. And I feel like, you know, as phys ed teachers, we kind of have to brainstorm in different ways than they do. Um, do you, do you feel the same way? I do. It's, it's sometimes a little bit challenging. Yeah. I feel like sometimes it it doesn't come as easy, but, uh, you know, that's part of the process and that's what we're here for. But as physical education teachers, it's our ultimate goal to help our students uh, make those connections to what we're teaching them and how they can use it not only in the gym during that class time, but also into the outside uh, real world. So, it you know, it doesn't always have to be a specific sport, but it could connecting learning can help ensure students how to live and maintain a healthy lifestyle because, you know, we have those students that aren't always so interested in phys ed or sports or um, physical activity, but now we're just shut down as soon as they come in the room. Exactly. You know, especially in the high school, I've seen a lot of students in a way think um, they're too cool. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Participating is so lame. Right. So, you know, if we take those students' interest and put that into consideration, now we're kind of reaching them on a different level. Um, Also, another, um, it was kind of like a chart diagram that I came across in the Connected Learning um, research article. It was talking about shared practices and the design principles within that was collaborative production, friendly competition, civic participation, and joint research, which kind of all of these categories just reminded me of phys ed because, you know, you're collaborating with your peers, whether it's taking part in friendly competitions. Right now, I know my school is doing a volleyball unit, so, you know, they're doing friendly co- competitions in volleyball with, it, with uh, their peers. And, you know, it's just creating that engaging but organized environment that they want to take part in. So that definitely stood out to me as I was um, going through that. That's cool. I think during like this time of year, volleyball is definitely um, something that students get like look forward to all, um, right. all fall 
all I heard like during, was during um, our like badminton unit was like, wow, I can't wait for the volleyball unit to start. Like that means it's, you know, winter time and it gets so competitive, especially, you know, with the older classes. Right. And that just goes to show, you know, they're really interested in uh, volleyball and it's something they, they want to participate in, take part in. Yeah. So, okay. Moving on to um, some other questions that we kind of came up with. Um, what are some ways to incorporate connected learning in phys ed? So, you know, like we said before, taking students' interests, like, especially like we said during the holiday season, you know, bringing that music yeah. in or like that theme. Um, however, you know, there's other as, um, other aspects as well. I think when you have, you know, a good relationship with a lot of your students, you already know what like things they're interested in, like what kind of sports they do or extracurricular activities, whether that be, you know, um, just things for fun and you can kind of always keep those in your back pocket but then for students that you know engage in football outside of um, the gym they can always you know help you out during those lessons and that can you know bring in a sense of like responsibility for them throughout um, class and it can, you know, make other students be a little more interested that they want to learn from their peers and in that aspect. But also there's a big side of phys ed that, um, you know, that you can connect to the outside world, which is like things like nutrition or CPR training. Those are both things that, you know, we like to focus on, especially um, throughout like the winter season when when winter seasons when gym space is a little more tight oh that's a good so, point like, yeah yeah bringing like nutrition units into it I remember like in fourth grade we did one and like when I was in fourth grade and it stuck with me you know to this day about like serving sizes and you know you don't really realize things like that so right. you know bringing that into um the gym and having them make those connections that they can you know I think especially with the younger students, they get excited to like bring home because they get to like share with their families, you know, things that they learned and things that their families might not even know. Right. And, you know, at, at uh, especially at the young age, it's so important to kind of tie these topics and critical components into things that they're interested in. Because like you said, in fourth grade, that stuck with you. So your teacher did an awesome job. Um, yeah. Like bringing like, what's your favorite snack? And then, right. Like, and, I think I remember the actual serving size. Actually, I want to say at Cortland, if I remember correctly, one of the professors had us bringing in like cereal, like your favorite cereal or something. Do you remember that class where they showed us the actual serving size of peanut butter? Right, (laughs) right. So it's like things that really stick out to you and you're like, oh, peanut butter. I really love peanut butter. But now I'm actually seeing um, how much of a serving size I should really have. So it really sticks with you when you make these connections in like a different different way so yeah yeah and it can enhance like the overall understanding of it because they're not just listening to you but like things that they can actually like engage with like I said like the CPR you know you're not gonna it's hard to forget things that like you're actually doing right whether instead of just like learning about it right all right well moving on uh to the next topic I would say oh so I took connected learning and I compared it to two different things. One was learning styles, which we actually talked about in another class, but it kind of side note. If that was crazy to me that there are like not learning oh, styles. Right. They're, they're like, uh, misconceptions, uh, learning yeah. styles. Yeah. That was definitely, I feel like we could do a whole podcast on that. <laughs> yeah. Mind blown. But yeah, so I, I tied connected learning into, le- into learning styles and then also, um, 21st century skills. I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but you know, we learned in another class that learning styles are actually a misconception and your typical, uh, audio visual, um, hands-on learning approaches, style approaches that we all thought we had actually don't exist. So, but now, you know, learning about connected learning, it actually makes sense because we're definitely starting to see this come into a full circle because if you use connected learning to spark students' interests and the opportunities and relationships, we could target their learning in all kinds of ways as opposed to just, oh, there's the student's a visual learner. Um, you know, meaning that if we incorporate teaching styles and approaches that include 
connect and learning techniques, we're actually reaching out to these students in all different styles, as you would say, as opposed to just one. Um, and there was a TED talk called Learning Styles and the Importance of Critical Self-Reflection that Tasha Marshik um, presented. And that was actually a crazy video, really interesting. Um, she was like a really good speaker too. She made it like engaging the entire time. Oh yeah, I actually like couldn't not watch it. I was so <laughs> I was so engaged. Um, but yeah, so that was definitely tied to another class, but um, incorporated into this that that just something I thought about. And then another thing we talked about um, in the beginning of the semester was Soul and Warwick's Defining 21st Century Readiness for All Students. That article we came across, I think it might have been even the first week. Um, and we kind of tied it into each week, the four C's, um, creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. I feel like um, a lot of the assignments and things we talked about throughout related back to that and it was always like tying it all together every single week piece by piece so this was definitely just you know another thing to add on to it but it just goes to show connected learning um can actually emphasize those survival skills that they talk about and the whole goal is to prepare these students for success in not only the classroom but also the real world so why not use connected learning to target the four C's. So um, I think it's something that all teachers should definitely develop and implement into the K through 12 schools to help set our students up for success. Do you agree? Yeah. But like, imagine what it would be like if, you know, this started from like the K level and then continuously built up all the way to 12, like, like everyone be more on the same page and everyone would, you know, kind of have those, like have those lessons that kind of stick with them instead of, I mean, guilt, I'm guilty of it, just things that we remembered for tests and then we took the test and then never thought about it again. Yeah. Um, so I think that, you know, if we're able to like make those connections and make those lessons about or like link to things that, you know, we can build off of and right. we can explain in our own words that like we're really helping, you know, each other out as educators um and you know when it comes to preparing them for the uh preparing our students for the real world and like the outside world not even um like i'm saying after like they graduate but like even you know just after school um like we said you know things like um nutrition and um how to you know be a good teammate or how to clean up um, equipment or how to handle equipment properly, like all those things that you are able to connect, like, oh, do you think, um, you know, the varsity coach would be happy to hear that, you know, so-and-so can't clean up. So like things like that, then they're going to be like, oh, like, you know, that kind of sticks with them. Although it's right. in maybe like a little threatening way, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, that they're going to think about it and like use that as a learning experience. Oh, yeah. Also, it's not the same, I guess, aspect that like connected learning is saying, but it's things that will stick with them. And then, you know, maybe things that they learn throughout that day will stick with them as well. <laughs> so basically, what I think, I think what we're kind of tying in and <laughs> wrapping up is uh, overall connected learning has such a significance um, and benefits within the classroom with our students um, and preparing them for the outside world and just so much more. Um, So I definitely know when I have my own true phys ed class, I'm looking forward to including this approach um, as I'm sure you are too. And overall, I think everyone should really incorporate connected learning techniques into their classroom um, and seek our students' interests and connect with them on a different level and tie it all together. Um, any any other last-minute things? No, this was exciting and fun. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're, we, like we said, we get excited when things can be related to our field of yeah. interest. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that's a wrap for today. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.